Well, good morning, Windsor Christian Fellowship. So today is a special Sunday. It's our Child Dedication Sunday. So yes, and we have special people here that are dedicating their children, and they've invited their families along to be with them. So in keeping with that theme, Pastor RJ and I wanted to talk to you today about the topic of family. And we wanted to talk to you in particular about the design that God has for family and in the different roles that he's created for mothers and fathers in particular. And that while seemingly these roles conflict with one another, in truly, they don't in God's real design. They are very different and they are very important and they are very essential to help your children grow healthy, socially, emotionally, and spiritually in many ways. So we want you to understand too, and we fully recognize, and we know that there are many parents here that are in different circumstances, whether you're facing a separation or divorce or, or you've been widowed or whatever circumstance it is and you're facing um, raising your children either alone or jointly in different homes, whatever it may be in your circumstance, God is bigger. And he is there to take and fill up the gap. He's there to fill up the space. He's there to fill up the lack. Um, as long as we're vigilant and we're prayerful as parents and we submit and entrust our children to him, that he gives us the wisdom, he gives us the grace that we need to do what we need to do and be there when we need to be there for our kids and that his grace is sufficient and that we're doing our job to point them to Jesus. Amen. Amen? Because we're not going to fill everything they need to get everything that they need from Jesus as well. So being parents today versus being kids today, you know, my daughter Isabel, she tells me, you know, mom, you know, like you were like young back in medieval times. Like, you know, being a kid today is really different than You're what it was. You're still young in my book. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Um, <laughs> being a kid today is different than when it is being a kid now. And... And I say to her, well, Isabel, well, that, there's some truth to that. Being a parent today is way different than it was being a parent way back when my mom and dad were raising us and parenting us. And I remind her all the time. I said, your needs as a child have not changed. It doesn't matter what era you are in. The needs of children have not changed. Yeah. But the weapons of our warfare have changed. So we are fighting against so many different things now to protect our children. I had to learn, thankfully, my husband is well-versed in this. He's fluent in, in text language and all these initials L -L -L. and everything else that's coming up on their texting and everything. And I'm like, what does this mean? I got to, you know, you got to be up on that stuff. And training your children and helping them to navigate through the Internet and be safe and um, how to teach them to make wise choices and be wise and to think for themselves and be critical and preparing them for the world ahead and and what's going on. And as mothers and fathers, we bring each a unique contribution to the family dynamic. We bring our strengths as men and women, moms and dads, husbands and wives to the relationship. And we also have our weaknesses, but we are supposed to be using our strengths to help cover our weaknesses and build walls of protection and safety for our family and to keep them safe. And where we tend to fall into the trap sometimes of the gender, the gender roles is that we feel like we're competing. Society has us competing against one another when we're not competing against one another. Who's better? Who's more important? We are supposed to be complementing one another, enhancing each other in the relationship. And God's design is that, you know, the first experience and exposure that your children get to forming good, healthy relationships is in the family. It's in their family unit, in their home. So in their family unit, in their home, God has made it so that while we're both different, neither one is more important, but it's so essential that each one make their contribution because it's different and unique and we all have to do what we need to do as women and what he needs to do as a man that we understand that we're made differently for a reason and that we're not competing with one another. Thank you, Angel. So I'm going to talk today. We're, it's he said, she said, so we're going to keep it real. 
my hope is that you'll have an opportunity to laugh at some point during the course of our conversation. But we're trying to give you a little bit of foundation for what we want to talk about. And I believe that fathers have a very unique ability. Your role, you can bless and impart into your children, and you can speak things over your children. And we see this in Genesis 49, where Jacob, as he was getting ready to go to the next life, he prophesied over all of his sons. He spoke into their future, into their destiny. And if you read through the whole thing, uh, he, you know, it looks like he cursed some of them, but really, he spoke and he prophesied into their future, and he, he saw what was going to come down the pipe for them, and he spoke that over them. You see that Jesus, when he was baptized, you can look in Matthew 3, around verse 16, God spoke, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, you know? And there was this affirmation and this speaking into and this declaring over that fathers have this great opportunity to do for their children. We model the love of God and the character of Christ to our children. In fact, children will often see the world around them and they will see God through the lens that we create as fathers. In fact, the father wound often carries on in children's lives well into adulthood and beyond. And until people get healing from that, it creates challenges for them. Deuteronomy chapter 11, you can see verse uh, chapter 6, verse 7, but it, it kind of says us a few times in this segment of the scripture, but it's talking about commit yourself wholeheartedly to these words of mine. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as your reminders. And you might hear me joke about tattoo it to your forehead, right? Teach them to your children. Man, this is part of our role, that spiritual impartation of biblical truth, that spiritual impartation of God's word to our children is your role. You're supposed to want to take the charge of that. Talk about them, what the principles, when you're at home and when you're on the road and when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates so as long as the sky remains above the earth, you and your children may flourish in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors. We train our children in family conduct. We train our children in responsibility. That's one of the roles that God has entrusted us to. So we impart these things to our children, and you need to be intentional about Deuteronomy 4, verse 10 tells us that children need to be taught to fear the Lord. That reverence for God, it needs to be taught. It's not something that they just automatically learn. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're modeling it, you're going a long way for them learning it because they're watching you. So fathers, as we impart this biblical truth and wisdom, it should not end when they reach adulthood. That means, as a father, your entire life, you impart the wisdom that God has given you to your children, even when they've left the home. Children should still be able to go to their fathers for insight and wisdom and revelation. You know, I saw this with my father, with Pastor Rick. He would call his dad often every day or every other day when he was in town, sometimes when he was away. And he would often receive wisdom from his father and encouragement into his 60s. My grandpa was in his 80s, you know what I mean? It, it was something, that relationship never ended where the father imparted to his son, and I believe that that should be something that we continue on with our entire life. Now, the key that we have to get to here is balance. Balance is the key, and, and studies show us fathers tend to encourage their children to take chances and push limits, while mothers tend to be protective and more cautious. I guess that's true in our household, too. Uh, each approach is essential for a child's healthy development, and when either parenting style is extreme, it can ha have an unhealthy effect on the children, but together, the different approaches of mother and father are balanced to nurture a child, expand his experiences, and give him confidence. I guess I have a picture. Sometimes a picture will explain more. If you guys could put that picture up. I know I've used this once before a long time ago, but this really captures the heartbeat of what I'm trying to say. So really, when it comes to tossing your child up in the air, the father sees this. The child feels like he's getting thrown. But the mother, what does she see? What are you doing? It was we, interesting because when we were going over this and we had found this quote from Focus on the Family, you know, I laughed. I was like, oh, my gosh, that's hilarious. That is, and, and thought of many situations. <laughs> many. <laughs> when, we see bike riding differently. <laughs> 
Yes. In our household, when I take the kids for a bike ride, it's a different journey than when my wife thinks we're going to, I mean, if she's away for the day and I want to take the kids bike riding, I need to like put a map out there for, you're going to take them this way. And you're not going on that road, are you? That's right. I Ska asked him specific questions about what he's doing. Skateboarding. I will say to him, I don't know if I should leave. I'm not sure about this because you're going to do some things I don't want you to do. Skateboarding, I'm like, you got a helmet, you, you got some pads. Okay, you can do the hill. All right. I don't care. <laughs> Try the hill. Yes. And then the last year for Christmas, we got our kids some, uh, what do you call them, skateboards. So they really wanted skateboards. So against my better judgment, <laughs> we let them get skateboards. And so it's Christmas. It's like winter. And there's ice and everything out there, but they were really anxious. They really wanted to get out there and try their skateboards. And Isabel, she was like begging to get out there and get try her skateboard. So, you know, she goes out and tries her skateboard. So she, the kids, her sisters come running home, yelling and screaming, Mom or Dad, you got to go quick. Isabel really hurt herself. You got to go get her. She can't walk. And like, so... Long story short, she's on crutches for the next two weeks because she sprained her ankle because she went down the hill on a skateboard that she's never ridden before. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, probably not the best thing to do is start your skateboarding learning on a hill. So dads tend to have more adventure <laughs> than moms. Yes, that was they adventure. tend to be a little bit more exciting. I mean, we took our family whitewater rafting and, you know, myself and some of the girls, we climbed up this, I don't know, it had to be 15 or 18 feet, and jumped off the rock into the ice cold water below, you know, while mom stayed in the boat. <laughs> she I, stayed in I, the raft. I let them do that. And <laughs> Tafara joined me. Tafara, we were together, you know, she didn't want to go down, jump off the big cliff so, in the ice cold water. Anyway, we're talking about balance and... and <clears throat> Really, what happens is it's the mother and father together that create that healthy environment for the children. We have to have lots of dialogue on this kind of thing all the time. Because left to myself, it would be a little crazy sometimes, I'm sure. <laughs> However, left to herself, you know, they have to leave the house sometimes and go out into the world and experience it. And you're not that bad. I'm just overemphasizing for effect. But Leviticus 19, let's get to the word. It talks about... You have to honor mother and father. And, and I find it really interesting that this passage in Leviticus 19, when it talks about mother first, each of you must show great respect for your mother and father, right? In the Hebrew culture that day, you would have never, never put the mother before the father. That would have never happened in those days. So for the Bible to actually list mother ahead of father, it tells me a couple things. The, the Hebrew culture was very progressive in the position of women compared to the other cultures of the day. And Christianity is really the one that, but that's another conversation. Secondly, we see that both parents have an equal role in imparting into their children, just in different arenas. And we develop different areas and aspects of their character and who they are. We have to form their worldview together. So I'm going to touch a little bit on moms and being a mom. And I have the honor and the privilege of being a mom to four lovely daughters. And in the front row here, we have my oldest, Isabel, and Abigail, Tafara, and Nadia. These are our four daughters. And I've had the privilege of being able to be mother to them. And I want to read to you a quote um, it's from the, a book called The Power of Mother Love, and it's by Dr. Brenda Hunter. And she casts the most beautiful vision of motherhood um, that I've read in a long time about what I'm calling the profession of being a mom, motherhood. Mother love shapes cultures and individuals. While most mothers know that their love and emotional availability are vital to their children's well-being, many of us do not understand the profound and long-lasting impact we have in developing our young children's brains, teaching them first lessons of love, shaping their consciences. At a time when society urges women to seek their worth and personal fulfillment in things that take them away from their families and intimate bonds, Hunter invites women to come home to their children, to their best selves, to their hearts. When I read this quote, 
it, it really resonated uh, with my heart on the inside of me. As a mom, we have the unique privilege of being that first point of contact of intimacy with our children and trust, forming the first deep bonds of emotional connection with our kids, and helping them to form the first lessons shaping their conscience in their children's lives. We're the ones who establish that emotional foundation in their life. And in a word, we have the most incredible influence that God has given us over our families, and we are the keeper of the heart of the family. Now, I am a working mom. I have been given, I want to articulate this right, because there are, in any situation that you're in, we're all in different situations as moms, and sometimes the avenue of staying at home is not always possible. You have to be working. And, the, and other times the avenue is you can stay home and you can make that choice, but yet we choose to work outside the home. And I think as women sometimes you fall into that trap, like that quote she says, society is urging us to go outside the home when our most valuable role is inside the home with our kids. And I... From God's word, he tells us there's a season and there's a time for everything. And he's arranged everything in time. And every season that he prepares for you lends itself to the next season that he's preparing you for. So as a mom that I know that when I was seeking God about what am I going to do and I want to be, the desire of my heart was to be a stay-at-home mom. And sometimes when you talk to other women and, oh, you know, what do you do, blah, blah, blah. And kind of, you know, I'm a stay-at-home mom, you know. Like, there's not any honor society doesn't give honor to that profession and it is that role of being a mom and the highest honor that you have and that our children are is that we're a mom and our children the bible says are god's greatest gift and if they're god's greatest gift how are we receiving that gift and how are we treasuring it how are we are we you know god's entrusted us with that how are we using that properly and in that season that i had of being a mom now, I'm not saying you can't have the best of both worlds, but as women, our trust needs to be in God. And if we have a desire to have a career, that's put in us by God. But I believe that his timing is perfect, and the time for you to have your career is in God's timing. But if he's given you children, the time for you to be a mom and to be involved and to be in their lives and to be an influencer in shaping their heart is, is the now, because you don't get a redo. You don't get to do it over again. We need to be a part of our children's lives in that time. And because of that time that I had with my kids, it so much better prepared me for when God called me out and said, now it's time for you to go out into the world. And the fullness of what I've taught you in my heart being expanded and being taught from being a mom and being at home with my kids, I was taking with me into the world and imparting that and not gaining my identity from the world, but my identity I got from Jesus. And I'm taking that and hopefully imparting healthy identity into other kids. I work for the Catholic School Board, and I teach special needs, and I get the opportunity to work um, with children. And having been home and raising my kids has so much better prepared me for that season of life when God called me out and said, now it's time, go out. And the grace is there for my kids when I'm at work and when, I, when I'm not at home, because if I'm obedient to the call of God, then I can demand that God give grace to my family, grace to my kids, because I'm obeying his call. And if that's what he's asked me to do, if I'm obedient to follow the call of God, then his grace is there for my family, whatever time that may be. And it's at different times. And sometimes the timing isn't always what I think it looks like. It's what God says it looks like. And we need to be vigilant and prayerful and asking the Holy Spirit, what does that look like and what that timing is? Proverbs 31, 25 to 27 says, She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise. She gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. So I really feel like she laughs without fear of the future is because she's been obedient to what God has called her to do and to be a mom, and that there is not any diminishing of that role. But it's a high honor that we've been given as moms and that we take that 
seriously and that as women that we are not uh, attacking each other when we're saying that we're a stay-at-home mom and that, well, we don't have a career outside the house when that is legitimate. That's a career. Being at home with your kids, raising your children. And if you do it right, you're tired. <laughs> you're weary at times. Being a parent and being a mom or a dad is intentional. It's on purpose. It's choosing to speak to your kids, being engaged with your kids, talking with your kids, communicating with your kids, letting your kids know that you're not perfect and that mom screwed up or dad screwed up and can you forgive me? I'm sorry. You're not going to come out of this unscathed. You're going to have issues and I'm sorry if my issues become your issues. You need Jesus too. And I'm pointing you to him. If I'm doing my job well, I'm pointing you to Jesus and I'm letting you know that he's bigger than that and he makes up where I lack. Amen. Amen. So we want to have some fun right now and we want to introduce our kids. Yeah, we're going to keep it real. And we didn't really rehearse a lot of this, but they helped us make up a, f a few little, you know, circum you know, events that go on in our house and who they go to because as kids, they're smart. They know who to go to to get what they want. They, they figured they it figured out real it out. quick. <laughs> so we want to have some fun with you. They're going to come out with us and help us we'll with this. We'll try this. <laughs> Hey, Dad, can I have a snake for a pet? Sure, Isabel, you can have a snake for a pet. Just make sure your mom's okay with it. Uh, Mom, can I have a snake for a pet? Uh, no. No Dad snake for a pet. Yes. No. Hey, Dad, can I have a chameleon? Sure, I had chameleons when I was young. I'd be happy to show you how to take care of them. You might want to check with your mom to make sure she's okay with it. Mom, can I have a chameleon, please, please, please? No, no chameleons in the house, thanks. What I said, no. please. Mom, can I have a dog or a cat? Yes, you can have a dog or a cat. Yeah, I like that idea, but I think you're going to have to ask Daddy first. Run that idea past him. Dad, can I have Absolutely a dog or a cat? Absolutely not. <laughs> Mom, can I have a chinchilla? A chinchilla. Yeah, you know what? That's up for discussion, a chinchilla. We'll talk about that one, Nadia. Dad, can I have a chinchilla? You know what a chinchilla is? I do. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about a chinchilla, Nadia. <laughs> hey, Dad, can we play on our iPads? Have you fulfilled your obligations? Yes. yes. Okay. Hey, Mom, can we play on our iPads? Have you done all your homework? Yes. Yes. Have you completed all your chores? Yes. Yes. Have you packed your lunch? Yes. yes. Have you put out your clothes for the night before? Yes. Yes. Have you practiced your piano? Yes. She only played one note. It counts. I practice. <laughs> Go practice your piano. So as you can see, they figure out real quick who to come to. Hey, Dad, who never left a school snack? Uh, no. Why not? Because every time I give you an after-school snack, you have a hard time finishing your supper. That's because you give us whatever you want, and Mom gives us limited options. Oh. See, yes, Mom gives them choices. <laughs> I say, you can have this, or you can have this. I say, have it. a snack. They're making nachos and cheese and putting frozen pizzas in the oven. <laughs> hey, Dad, can I have ice cream for dessert? Isabel, how much sugar did you have today? Only a donut, a hot chocolate, a chocolate bar, and you tell on my toast in the morning? Yeah, I'm thinking you've had enough, no. Reset. Mom, can I have, can I have ice cream for dessert? Sure, Isabel, that's a reasonable request. You may have some ice cream. Thank you. <laughs> can we have, have a, a friend over? Uh, talk to your mom. Can we, can have, we have a friend over? over? Please. Yes, you can have a friend over. Within the guidelines, in the context of having friends over, there is rules for that, believe it or not. Hey, Dad, I have to get on piano soon, so can you help me with my chore? No, go do your own chore, then get on the piano. You're nice. Mom, I have to get on piano, can you help me with my chore, please? Sure, honey, I'll help you with your chores. You go practice your piano. Thank you. Burn. 
Hey, Mom, will you read Lord of the Rings with me? Lord of the Rings. I think that book you'd better enjoy with your dad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dad, will you read Lord of the Rings with me? Sure, Isabel. We can le read Lord of the Rings together. Okay. Dad, can you read with me? Even though it's close to my bedtime? Sure, Abigail. And if we go a little past your bedtime, that'll be okay. Daddy privilege. Mom, can you read with me? Even though it's past my bedtime. Close to my bedtime. Tell you what, Abigail, tonight, because it's so close to your bedtime, why don't we have a long cuddle instead? They're short chapters, but okay. <laughs> hey, Dad, can you help me with my French? You have an app for that? Say hi, and if not, talk to your older sisters. <laughs> <laughs> can you help me with my math? Sure, I'll gladly help you with your math. Can you help me with my French? Yes, I can help you with your French. Can you help me with my math? Uh, no. Go see daddy for math. That's the discussion on French immersion. See, I can help them with their French. He has the math. Mom, I had a bad dream. You had a bad dream? Do you want to come and cuddle with mommy and daddy? Yeah. Come on over here. Come on. No, not there. Why not there? Because daddy would fall. Oh. I saw Nadia come out and thought I'd join the party. Come join the party. It's been a really long night for me. I couldn't fall asleep at all. I just said to Farah and Nadia come in here. So I think I'm just going to join the party. All right, come on and cuddle with us. I was totally not up yes. to 2 a.m. reading and heard everyone come in here, but I'm just going to join to add this girl's night. You might have to hit the couch. <laughs> Man, I remember when we first got married and we decided to have children. I was like, no way are those kids coming to bed with us. It's not happening. Mom, can you do my hair? Honey, I'm really running late. I got to get to work. But why don't you ask daddy or one of your sisters for help with your I hair? I already asked all my sisters. I think they'll help you. Dad's daddy. not going to do it. No way. No, the last dad. time dad did Nadia's hair, he did it in a dinky little ponytail, fell out three times, and I had to spent all my time doing it, so I'll do it. <laughs> Daddy, my tummy hurts. Abigail, I'll get you some bentonite clay that'll help you feel a little better. Just drink this. It's gross. <laughs> Mommy, my tummy hurts. Your tummy hurts? Well, why does your tummy hurt? What did you eat today? Candy. Candy. Yeah. Well, that would explain why your tummy hurts. Do you have a fever? No, no fever. Well, we'll get you some bentonite clay, and we'll hopefully it'll get you all fixed up, okay? Bentonite clay is good. <laughs> Usually it's like 12 pieces of candy and four donuts. Mommy, can we wrestle? I think you'd have more fun with Daddy if you wrestled with him. Dad, can we wrestle? Sure, just one at a time. No, not one at a time. Me and the football team, you beat me up. Well, if your other sisters join, it's too many arms and feet coming at me, so how about we just do you two? <laughs> Daddy, the Mental Night Play was working, and then naked to the bathroom on the bathroom floor. If you on the floor? Unless you want me to join you and put another little bit there, maybe you should go talk to your mom. <laughs> Um, I, the best night play worked, and like I make it to the bathroom, and I only made it to the bathroom floor. I threw it on the floor. You did, huh? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Well, we'll get you all cleaned up, honey, and we'll go clean that mess up, okay? I'll take care of it for you. You go get some rest. Good. <laughs> hey, Dad, I think I have cramps. Yeah. So, Isabel, I know your mom made you some Dragon Time essential oils. Did you, did you use that? I may have accidentally on purpose ran out. Just tell me I can have Advil. That's just Go talk stinks. to your mom. She'll make you another batch. You're no help. <laughs> hey, Dad, can you take me shopping at the mall? Sure, it's fair. I'll take you shopping at the mall. Did you just say that I shopping? Nobody's been shopping without me. Sure, Nadia, you can come shopping with us. You guys cannot go to the mall without me. I'm shopping Okay, too. Abigail, we'll go to the mall together. Thanks. 
Whoa, whoa, no one hits the mall without me. I'm coming too. Okay, I guess all four of us are uh, going to the mall. You can't hit the shopping mall without mom. <laughs> Mom's Don't coming too. It. Dad's buying. <laughs> you know, one time, true story, I actually took all four of them to the mall to pick out their skateboards. And while we were there, we even bought my wife a dress. And people were looking at me like, you've got four daughters and you're shopping for what? And I was like, yeah, the things dads do. Mom, can we do Stuffy Land? No, not tonight. Stuffy Land is too much. Not tonight. Dad, can we do Stuffy Land? What is, you know what? Just go stuffy do Stuffy Land. land. Can we buy stuffy? <laughs> Hey, Dad, can I paint my nails? Uh, sure, Abigail, go paint your nails. What color are you going to do? A variety. Uh. Hey, Mom, can I paint my nails? No, absolutely not. The last time you painted your nails, you got all over my furniture, all over my clothes, on the floor. No nail painting till further notice. It's not like I turned your whole house into an easel. Hey, Mom, isn't this outfit, like, totally cute? I got it at the mall the other day, and I got the new shoes. They were, like, 40% off at CVS. Isn't it, like, adorable? Totally, Isabel. It's so adorable. It's super cute. But Don't say that. Haven't you, like, <laughs> changed your shirt, like, so many times right now? Like, how many outfits do you need to wear in a day? Only five. Only five? Excuse me, you wore way more than five. You wore, like, ten. I think the laundry basket clearly shows that you have worn more than five. Oh, well, Burn. that's a peek into our world. Has any of you ever experienced anything like that? You're going to. You gonna come take a bow, girls? All right, Dun, 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 dun. Husbands and wives need to model respect for each other. One of the things that's key, I think, to not only your sanity, but to creating a healthy environment for your children is, men especially, we have to value our wives' opinions and we have to value our differences. So one of the things that we had to do, like that French immersion conversation, my goodness, it took my wife a year to convince me to put our children into French immersion, but I'm really glad that they're there now because they do a pretty good job with their French. Much better than I. <laughs> so we tend to, um, if we're not careful, there's these traps that the enemy sets for us, you know? And, and this weekend, putting this together, we probably fell into all 15 of them, although I'm only going to list a couple. <laughs> uh, good cop, bad cop, you know, where one parent feels like they're the one that has to always be doing the discipline. Or uh, there's a spiritual attack coming against families where I believe spirits twist words and you might say one thing and they read something totally different. This happens all the time in relationships. Uh, or you just give in to your children and you take the easy way out. At the end of the conversation, I have to ask myself these two questions. Number one, did I exemplify the character of Christ in my response to my daughters in that last exchange? And secondly, did I show them how the cross helps them or brings them freedom in the struggle? So really, at the end of the day, that's the goal. I want to model for them the character of Christ and show them the love of God and the character of Christ. And secondly, we want to show them that despite the struggle, the cross is always going to help them find freedom. And you also wanted to talk about and touch on a mutual cooperation that you have with each other and looking at the different love languages of your children. And I, I say to my children often that fairness doesn't mean sameness. So... I tell them that your role in this family is unique and it's individual. And the gifts and talents that God has given you are unique and they're individual. And you fulfill a place and a place in my heart and a place in this world that nobody else can. So your preparation to fulfill that role and walk in it is going to look different. And your training is going to look different. Now, we have the same, you know, rules in general, and they adhere to all of those things in general. When I'm dealing with them individually, and I know, like, their personality, one's more sensitive than the other. One might need to hear things in a certain way. You know, it's, it's, it's knowing, getting to know your kids and asking them, you know, what do you like? How does this work for you when mom does this? Do you like time? Do you like mom and dad to, 
uh, give you gifts? What is your personal love language that really speaks to you and lets you know that you're affirmed and that you're accepted for who you are and you don't need to compete for our love against your sisters? You're different and that's good and you can do different things than you, apart from your siblings and that's okay and that we want to affirm that their differences are good and that they're gifts from God. And when I'm training them and I'm teaching them, I'm asking God, Lord, what am I supposed to be pulling out of them? What am I supposed to be helping them recognize and see? And so we want to be very important and diligent. I need to just look at that scripture first. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I got really excited to get to the next portion and I turned off your iPad. I just want to see that one scripture first really quickly. Proverbs tells us um, to train up a child in the way that they should go, teaching him to seek God's wisdom and will for his life, abilities, and talents. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And that's Proverbs 22, verse 6 in the Amplified. So it shows that we have different gifts and abilities and that in each of our children, we want to be looking at them as individuals and not like as groups and that we train them in the way that they should go and what God has in store for them. Amen.